Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the soft palate. So, what is soft palate? The soft palate is the movable posterior one third of the palate, this part, okay, that is suspended from the posterior border of the hard palate. And this soft palate has no skeleton, no bone. It is a fold of mucous membrane containing the aponeurosis and the muscles. It separates the naso nasopharynx to oropharynx. It has two surfaces, the superior surface and inferior surface, two border, the upper border and the lower border. You can see superior border and inferior border. It is an aponeurostic part called palatine aponeurosis that is formed by the tendon of the tensor belly palatini. So, what is evula? This is the evula. This is a conical projection from the middle of the inferior border. This is the conical projection from the middle of the inferior border. Palatoglossal arch and palato pharyngeal arch, two arches are, are formed from the base of the evula. So, this is the palatoglossal arch and this is the palato, this is the palatopharyngeal arch, okay. Palatoglossal arch is going to the side of the tongue, okay. Palatoglossal arch is going to the side of the tongue and the palatopharyngeal arch is going to the pharynx, okay. In between them, we have the tonsillar sinus containing the palatine tonsil. And this part forms the, the isthmus of the, of the fossis. Okay. So, the fossis is the space between the oral cavity and the pharynx. Okay. So, the ebula, we got that. We have two folds from the base of the ebula. One is palatoglossal fold. And there is palatopharyngeal fold. It is going to the pharynx, palatoglossal fold going to the side of the tongue. So, what are the functions of soft palate? Soft palate is very important for deglutition, for phonation, for articulation. Okay, and it it prevent the entry of food to the nasal pharynx. That is another function of the of the soft palate. Okay, so what is the structure of the soft palate? Okay, this is a fold of mucous membrane. It is lined above by the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Below it is lined by the stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, so this side is stratified squamous epithelium. On the other side, superior surface that forms the floor of the nasal cavity. So, that should be lined by the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Okay. So, it contains mucous membrane containing following parts, palatine aponeurosis, muscles on the soft palate, mucous glands, and taste buds. So, what is fossus? We discussed. It is the space between the oral cavity and pharynx. What are the boundaries of the fossus? It is bounded above by the soft palate, below by the root of the tongue, by the side it is it is bounded by the palatoglossal arch and palatopharyngeal arch. They form the pillar of the of the fossis. Anterior pill pillar is formed by the palatoglossal arch that contain platoglossus muscle. Posterior pillar is formed by the palatopharyngeal arch that contain the Palatopharyngeal muscle. So, palatoglossal muscle is here inside it, palatopharyngeal muscle is inside it. Okay. So, this is the isthmus of the fossils. And this area is called tonsillar sinus containing the palatine tonsil. This is the soft palate. It has no bone. Bone is present in the hard palate. Okay. We have the, this is, and palatoglossal arch also forms the anterior margin of the oropharyngeal isthmus. Okay, we got that. Now we go to the 
muscles of the soft palate. What are the muscles of the soft palate? Okay, we have the muscle, we have the tensor belly palatine muscle. Okay, we have the levator belly palatine, musculus evoli, palato glossus and the palatopharyngeus muscle. These are the muscles of the soft palate. So we are looking at that levator belly palatine, tensor belly palatine. It is related to the pterygoid hemulus here. Okay. This is the tendinous part from the tensor belly. The tensor belly palatine will form the palatine aponeurosis and will get the muscularis evula here. Muscularis evula is here. And here we are seeing the palatoglossal muscle and palatopharyngeus muscle. So palatoglossus muscle, palatopharyngeus muscle. Okay. All the muscles of the soft palate are innervated by the pharyngeal plexus through the vagal branch of the pharyngeal plexus, except the except the tensor belly palatine, which is innervated by the mandibular nerve okay we got that now we'll go to the muscles of the soft palate okay tensor belly palatine nerve supplied by mandibular nerve okay and it tenses the soft palate opens the auditory tube especially during swallowing and yawning and levator belly palatine it elevates the soft palate palatoglossal muscle elevates back of the tongue, depresses the palate, the soft palate, depresses the soft palate. Palatopharyngeus muscle, again, nerve supply is sent, vagus nerve, via the pharyngeal branch to the pharyngeal plexus. Muscular civil is same nerve supply, shorten evenly and pulls it superiorly. And this is important, some of the fibers of the palatopharyngeus, the upper fiber, that go to the pharynx and they are on the inner aspect of the superior constrictor muscle and forms a type of sphincter. And these fibers are called the superior fiber of palatoglossa of the platopharyngeus are called pesabent rays. Okay. So we got that musculus evoli shortens evoli, evula and pulls it superiorly. Muscular evoli, it takes origin from the nasal spine of the heart palate and it is covered by the fibers of the, of the palatine aponeurosis and it blended with the connective tissue of the evula. Okay, we got that. And this is the origin. So from the auditory tube, we are getting tensor belly palatine origin, levator belly palatine origin, both of them partly coming out of the auditory tube cartilage and the cartilage of the auditory tube is an elastic cartilage okay so nerve supply we have just discussed that all the muscles of the soft palate are innervated by the pharyngeal plexus via the vagus nerve except the tensor belly palatine which is innervated by the mandibular nerve General sensation that means pain, touch, temperature carried by the maxillary nerve and the ninth cranial nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve. Special sensation for taste, it is carried by lesser palatine nerve, then greater petrosal nerve, geniculate ganglion, a ganglion of the facial nerve, facial nerve, then it goes to the to the nucleus of solitary tract. Secretomotor nerve. Okay, that is coming out of the superior salivatory nucleus, then get a petrosal nerve, then going to the lesser petrosal nerve. There is a secret of motor, it will increase the secretion for the mucous gland, and this will create the taste sensation, the special sensation. This is for the pain, touch, temperature sensation. This is for the motor movement of the muscle. Okay, blood supply and lymphatics. The artery supply, get a platinum artery branch of maxillary artery, ascending platinum artery branch of 
facial artery. Branches of ascending pharyngeal artery branch of external carotid artery. Vein, okay. We go to the vein now, okay. Vein is drained through the pterygopalatine and, tons and tonsillar plexus of vein, okay. So, these are the, this is the venous drainage. Lymphatics goes through the deep cervical lymph node and rectopharyngeal lymph node, okay. Okay, now learn some of the clinical anatomy. Paralysis of the soft palate is possible when the vagus nerve is damaged or we have cervical instability that may also cause cause paralysis of the soft palate. So if the vagus nerve is paralyzed, ebola deviates towards the healthy side. So what we will say, we say the patient to say the word ah uh, ah. Uh, and we look at the soft, soft palate, especially the ebola. Ebola is moving, it should be in the middle in a healthy person. If it moves towards one side, that means that side is healthy. Other side is unhealthy, that is the paralyzed side. So if I have left vagasna paralysis, then my ebola will move towards the right side. Okay, that is the healthy side. So, the soft plate may be associated with cleft palate with or without cleft lip. The cleft palate may be confined to the ebola area, okay, or it may go to the midline of the soft palate and may go through the hard palate, okay, or it may be laterally oriented, fissure or gap in the hard palate and that may be associated, usually associated with the hair lip or cleft lip, okay, that is possible. Okay, and that's all about the anatomy of the soft palate. We must know the muscles, their nerve supply, lining epithelium, superiorly pseudostriper ciliated columnar epithelium, below stratiform squamous epithelium, and we must test the vagus nerve, asking the patient to say the word ah ah. We look at the ebola. Ebola is on the paralyzed side, cannot move. The soft palate will not go up. It will go up and move towards the healthy side. Okay, we got that. And we have the muscle, the tensor belly palatine, levator belly palatine, muscularis ebola. We have the palatoglossal, platoglossus, palatopharyngeus muscle. Okay, and that's all about the anatomy of the soft palate. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends. Please support my channel. Please subscribe me and have a nice day. Bye now.